Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. In my previous video, I covered how to create UDP server with STM32 Ethernet, and as I mentioned in that video, today we will see the UDP client. In the previous video I used the F7 board, which doesn't need any memory configuration, and we went with the default setup. In this video I will use the H7 board, which is going to need the memory configuration, and we will try to keep things as close to default as possible. I am saying this again, you need to watch the first two videos about the hardware connection for Ethernet module. Let's start the video, and create a new project in Cube IDE. As I mentioned, I am using H7 board. Give some name to the project, and click finish. Here is our Cube MX. Let's enable the Ethernet connection. The pins looks too messy, let me clear the pin out first. Now we will enable the MII, or RMII, whatever type your board have. Make sure the pins are configured properly, as per the schematics. We will check the rest of the settings in a while, let's configure the clocks first. I am selecting external high speed crystal for the clock. Configure the clocks as per the crystal available on your board. Alright now let's go back to Ethernet, and configure the rest of the setup. Enable the global interrupt. In the parameter setting we do have the option to configure the memory. I am leaving everything to default. Take a good look at these addresses, as we are going to use them in the flash script. Now let's enable the lightweight IP. It's not letting me enable it, because I haven't enabled the cache yet. So enable the data and instruction cache. Now I got the option to enable the LWIP. I am going to do the same configuration, that I usually do. The memory size will be 10 kilobytes. Leave everything to default here. And now we will disable the DHCP, and instead provide a static IP to our module. That's it. Now choose the available solution here. The MPU configuration must be done when we have configured the memory in the Ethernet settings. Enable the background region privileged access. Enable the MPU region. The base address will be the start of the DMA descriptor addresses. The size will be 32 kilobytes. Text should be 1, and this way we set the region as non-cacheable memory region. Before we go any further, let's enable the timer. We will set this periodic interrupt, which when triggered, will send the data to the server. I am choosing timer 1 for this purpose. Choose the source as internal clock. If we check the datasheet, we can see that in this particular MCU, the timer 1 is connected to the APB2 clock. Right now the APB2 timer clock is running at 240 MHz. The plan is to use a periodic callback every one second, so that the client can send the data to the server. To bring this 240 MHz clock to 1 Hz, we will first use the prescaler of 24000. This will bring the clock down to 10 kHz. An auto reload value of 10000 will further divide this clock, and bring it down to 1 Hz. Make sure the update interrupt is enabled. 
This is it for the configuration, now click save to generate the project. I am going to use the same code that I did in the previous video. This way we will be able to test the ping first. Let's build and test this part first. We also need to add the memory details in the flash script. This is necessary in this video, as we did the memory configuration in the Cube MX. Everything so far has already been covered in the hardware connection video, so if you didn't understood anything, watch the first video in the Ethernet series. This is it, let's try to ping to the module. This is the IP address that has been assigned to the module, and here you can see the ping test is a success. Alright let's move on, and now we will see the UDP client. Copy the UDP client source and header files into the project folder. So here is the UDP client.c file. Here are the steps to configure the UDP client. You can check out this source website. Here I have defined the timer, you can change it as per your setup. Here is the period elapsed callback function, and it will run every one second. Inside the callback, we will send the data to the server. Now let's see the steps to configure the client mode. First of all we will create the UDP block. We can do this by calling UDP new. Then we will bind the client to the local IP address and port. The local IP is the IP of the module and port is just some random port. and also connect the client to the server, using the server IP and port. You can look for the destination IP by typing IP config in your Windows machine. This port, 7, we will assign to the server, when we will create the server. Now the step 2 is to send the data to the server. I am using this function, UDP client send, to send the data to the server. Then we will wait for the response from the server. To do this, we will set a receive callback, which will be called when the server will send some data to this client. UDP receive takes the UDP control block as the parameter, and the next parameter is the UDP receive function which is the callback in our case. Let's see the function to send the data now. Here first we are creating a packet buffer, which we will send later. This buffer will contain the information about the data that we are going to send. Next we will copy this string into the data buffer. This counter value will keep changing. Then we will allocate the memory for the packet buffer. Next the pbuff take will copy the data into the packet buffer. Finally UDP send will send the data to the server. And in the end we will free the memory for the packet buffer. When the client receives some data from the server, this callback will be called. Here we will copy the data from the server into this buffer. This is just in case if you want to utilize that data. And here we will increment this counter variable. This counter variable will increment every time the server sends some data to the client and the data is being sent by the timer callback every one second. 
Now in the main function, all we need to do is call the UDP client connect function. Also don't forget to start the timer. Let's build and flash this. I am using Hercules to create a UDP server, so that the client can connect to it. I am opening the port 7, which will be the server port. Here you can see the same message is being continuously sent by the client, until the server sends some data to the client. As soon as the server sends the data, the counter value is increased. It will keep continuously sending the same data again, until the server sends some data. The message is being sent every one second, just as we programmed it in the, the timer callback. When the client receives the data from the server, the receive callback is called, where the value of the counter variable gets updated. So the UDP client is sending the data to the server, the server sends some response to the client, and this process keep going on forever. This is it for this video. I don't have any better way of showing the working right now. Maybe in the near future, I will make some application oriented video on this topic. But for now, I just wanted to show the working of UDP client and the server. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, be safe, and have a nice day ahead.